Good morning. I want to start off by thanking Marcus for inviting me to speak here today, and I want to thank Hanan for nominating me. It's really a privilege to be surrounded by such inspirational people and people who are always willing to learn and grow from others. So my name is Minar, and I created a social media brand called Notes to Self. It's a brand that provides daily notes, information, and advice on how to live your best life. And later on in the talk, you'll see how I came about with that idea. So when Marcus asked me to speak here, the first thing that I thought was, how can I give the most value to these people in such a short time? So the second question was, well, what was the thing that gave me most value in my life? So today, I'm going to share with you the two most important lessons that I've learned. And those lessons ultimately changed my perspective in life. When my perspective changed, my thoughts changed, everything about me changed. The way I talked, the way I acted, the way I reacted, the way I loved, the way I lived, and the way I showed up in the world. Everything changed. And those two lessons were, number one, that I am here to live as the best version of myself and live my best life. And number two, that this journey is not my journey alone, that it is our journey. And you're going to see how important you are in this journey. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. I've always been into personal development and personal growth. I've actually been studying it for a decade now. And I was trying to think, when was the first time I ever got hold of a personal development book? And I remember it was straight out of university. I got my first job. And my dad was super excited because it was at a bank. So he went out and he got me all these books on banking. And he also got me one of those how-to books. And he gave me the book, and I looked at the book, and I read the title, and it was like, How to Make Anyone Like You. And I looked at my dad, I was like, How to Make Anyone Like You? Do you really think that I need this? And my dad looked at me, and he was like, I think you need this. And I was like, Dad, you're my dad. If you think of this about me, what do other people think about me? And he was like, Ya Baba, Ya Manar. Do not get offended all the time and be so upset. I understand you. You are a shy and quiet person. But people, they mistake you for being a snob and someone who's unrelatable and not kind. And I was like, okay, please go on. <laughs> and then he was like, I want you to read the book with an open mind. Because in work, you have to be relatable and you have to be social for things to, go, for things to run smoothly. So after getting over my initial drama, I actually read the book, and I really enjoyed it. And that was the first time in my life where I looked inside me in order to learn something, as opposed to look outside. And I took a lot of the stuff that I learned from the book during my time at the bank and in life. And I was at the bank for about seven years. And after seven years, I had to leave because I got married and I moved to Dubai. My husband and I, we had our kids right away, so I never really had a chance to get back to work and study further education, which was what I was planning to do. So I found myself at a different point in my life. I was no longer this career-focused lady who was planning to take over a bank. I was now a wife, a mom, and oh my God, a stay-at-home mom. I never thought I would be that person. And... I really was at a low point in my life. My fears and my insecurities started taking over me. Because you see, my value system back in the day was Manar equals her job title plus her salary. And that was what my self-worth was to me. So you could imagine how I felt about myself, what my self-worth was at that time. It was zero. So like I said, my fear started taking the best of me and they took over my mind, and they were driving me crazy. They took control of my life. And the worst part is, and if you're a parent, you understand this, when your fears take control of you, they don't just control you, they control your children's lives as well. And I looked at my kids, and I was like, look at these kids, they're so amazing. They deserve to live in a world of opportunity and hope. And I can't give that to them if I raise them from a place of fear and disappointment and shame. 
So what can I do to change this? Well, I can't change the world. I can't change politics. I can't change people. I can't even change my kids for God's sake. I can't even control them. Who's a parent here? When you tell your kids what to do, they either don't do it or they do the opposite. But they never learn from what you tell them. However, your kids do learn from your example. They mirror everything that you do. And then when I got to that revelation, I thought, well, if I want my kids to live as the best version of themselves and live their best life, then I must do that first. So I started working on myself immediately, and I started working on the most important part of me, and that was my mind, my belief system. I started writing notes to myself, and I wrote notes that aligned me with the kind of life that I want for my family and for myself. And one page turned into one notebook, one notebook turned into hundreds of notebooks and files on my computer and files on my iPhone. And slowly but surely, when things started changing in here, everything out here started changing too. My circumstances, the people, my relationships, everything changed. And for the first time in a long time, I felt like I was in a good place and I felt good about myself. And I came from a place of power as opposed to being in a place of being a victim like I was before. And the even better part about this is that I raised myself from the most positive place, and I raised my family as well. I didn't have to put anyone down. I didn't have to backstab anyone. I didn't need to talk badly about anyone to feel, ba- to feel good about myself. I just raised myself from the best place I knew in myself. So I thought, if these notes could help me, they could help other people. So I started an Instagram account, and I started sharing my notes on a daily basis in hopes that people can take them and reprogram and change their mindsets as well. So you see, it was my kids who inspired me to live my best life. They gave me my first big lesson in life. But the second biggest lesson I learned was that this is not my journey alone. This is our journey. Because you see, when everybody is functioning from their highest, truest, and purest self, what do you think the kind of world we'd live in would look like? Think of all the wars and the hate and the greed and the famine. I really think we'd get rid of a lot of that. Because ultimately what you're doing is, you're creating a ripple effect. Once you raise yourself, you raise everyone around you. And in turn, they raise everyone around them. And instead, we'd be living in a world that functions from a place of love and compassion and gratitude and non-judgment and abundance. And I don't know about you, but this is the kind of world I want to live in. It's the kind of world that I want to create for my children and my children's children. And I want that for your children as well. So you see, this journey wasn't about me after all. This journey isn't about you either. It's really about all of us, and we're all in it together. So thank you very much. Oh, oh, oh. (laughs) On Instagram, you can follow me on at Notes to Self Insta. I'm also on Twitter, Notes to Self Tweet, and I'm starting a Facebook page too. Thank you. Thank you very much.